talk about uh, the old, uh, you want to be on a live stream? Hmm? You want to be on a live stream? Oh, yeah. Yeah, follow Mechanical Hub. <laughs> So there's 31, there's enough people. So look who's here. Hey, how we doing? <laughs> you guys don't know who this is, this is Keith Fenner. You live now? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, uh, how we doing? So uh, Keith and I are up here for a... Um, uh, media event. A media event for Linux tools. They make the saw blades and uh, band saw blades, drill bits, stuff like that. I didn't even realize Keith was going to be here. I've been a subscriber to him, subscriber to him for. Yeah, you better get down a little bit there. Yeah. Oh, Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a subscriber to Keith for, uh, gosh, it's 2012, 2011 or something like that. I think he had like 6,000 subscribers and you're up to six. You have to six now? <laughs> <laughs> I've gained six more. Um, about, hundred, about 111, I think, something yeah. like that. So. 100 some thousand subscribers. But if you guys don't, Subscribe to Keith's channel. You got to get over there and look at it, man. It's a, a fantastic channel, and it's one of the like me and Justin with Good to Land talk about his channel all the time. And I know Justin is freaking out because he was supposed to be here and he didn't go. And like Keith is one of his favorite guys. And like as soon as I saw Keith here, I was I walked there. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna text yeah. Justin. He's got a little longer. He's got to grow that. See? Yeah, I got to match it. <laughs> I did have it all the way out to here, but yeah. it was a... I actually, just the other day, I, I went ahead and I brought it back in clean on both sides. So. Yeah. yeah. You walked to the hotel? Yeah. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, we're in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, in Pretty the, cool uh, place. Was this Hartford? Springfield. Springfield, Massachusetts. I keep calling it Maine for some reason. Yeah, that's north of us. Yeah. I'm daydreaming about being over by Cape Cod. <laughs> <laughs> Go do some fishing. Set in Massachusetts. There's Moose. It's funny, every time I have a live, do you have that? Do you ever do a live stream? Uh, once in a while, I haven't in a long time, so. I mean, got a cross here, I guess. Yeah. Try not to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> of walking into something. Yeah, it's, it never ceases to amaze me, because you, you always have these, like, these core group of guys that no matter what you put up, they comment on, you put up a, um, a live stream, like they're they're on that live stream immediately. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, I've uh, uh, I've checked out uh, James uh, James Green does live streams once in a while, and uh, also uh, you know the live streams at the Bash and everything else. Those were fantastic too as well. It uh, it was kind of nice to sit down once in a while and get in front of the camera and uh, and uh, you know just put a put a live face that you know when somebody's talking. I mean it's just like a personal live live chat on Skype or whatever. You know I mean to your family members, but here's somebody that you're reaching out to that you get to see on there. And um, I've always maintained at least. At least being available, you know. Yeah. So that uh, uh, you know you want to say hi or, or whatever. Of course, I, there are so many minutes in a day and yeah, you know, and, and things like that. But most people are respectable on that, and uh, sometimes they got a legitimate uh, problem they might want to talk about, and uh, I might have experience in that way, and you know that's that's what it's all about, sharing. Yeah. If you guys, uh, so there's 120 of you guys on the live stream right now. Somebody. Like multiple of you guys, don't just let one, but go over to Keith's channel, copy the link on his channel, and then put it up in the description so you guys that don't know who Keith Fenner is. And um, if you're on YouTube a lot, you don't know who Keith Fenner is, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I'm serious because there's so many other channels like uh, A Bomb 79. Adam talks about Keith all the time. Yeah, Tom, Adam's a great person. Um, Doug Jackson with SV Seeker. Yeah. Doug, Doug talks about. Yeah. He's uh, popped by the shop. Yeah, he's been yeah, by a shop. He talks about Keith all the time. Surprised um, the heck out of me. Tom Lipton talks about Keith all the time. Uh, Stan with the. Uh, what's Stan's channel on Bar Z? Uh, Shaden? Uh, Shad on. Shad um, on KW or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Yep. He talks about Keith all the, all the time, you know? So it's one of those like. Got a surprise guest over yeah. there we can't show you. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you guys put that link up to his channel, um, so the other guys that don't know aren't familiar with it can actually go. You, you want to see a live stream for a while? Um, no, I'm, I'm 
gonna yeah. uh, meet up with the other half here and, okay. and uh, see how it's going. So everybody out there, get it done. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow morning. All right. Tomorrow morning. Good night. <clears throat> so, so yeah, kind of a neat. No stealing stuff. Caught you stealing it, didn't I? <laughs> Handfuls of sugar. Um, so yeah, that's Keith Fenner. Um, so I can't, can't talk highly enough about the guy. And like I said, if you guys don't know who that is, You need to know if just stream yet. So the guys that just joined, um, familiar where I'm at. What I'm doing a live. I'm doing a live stream. I don't know if you want to be in a video or not. Do you? Okay. You can take me out of it. I don't know where the uh, stairs are. Probably gonna lose you guys. There, my back. <clears throat> yeah, guys, I uh, let me get in the uh, my room here. I didn't broadcast that I was going to be up here because I'm only up here for today and tomorrow. I'm not up here with a vehicle. I didn't get a rental car. I don't have anywhere way to go any way to go anywhere. There. Now I'm in my room I should talk. Um so yeah, let me turn some lights on here. Oh, I turned you off. Hang on, guys. I'm getting in my hotel room, so. Okay, so let me preface this. What am I doing in uh, Massachusetts? Linux, the saw blade company, the company that makes bandsaw blades. Ah, sorry, guys. I don't know what, what happened there. Get my light set up here. Okay. The lighting is going to be really terrible. Um, I'm in a hotel room. So what am I doing up here? Uh, Linux, the company that makes the... Uh, somebody post a comment, maybe sure that I'm not just talking to myself. Um, the company that makes the whole saws, saw blades, saws all blades, that makes some cutoff wheels, stuff like that. They have a media event coming up and they invited a bunch of social media and social influencers. That's what you call YouTubers to come out and um, uh, check out the event. So uh, they flew me out here today. I got here about two o'clock, had dinner at 530. Tomorrow morning we wake up, we go to the um, uh, what do you call the the, man, the factory where they make everything. Then we have lunch and then they have a demo. They're going to demo a new tool. So we're getting our hands on these new tools before they actually uh coming to market about a month before so they invited me and i uh and justin would go to land justin couldn't make it uh and apparently keith finner i didn't know who else is going to be here the big youtubers is me and keith finner the rest of the guys i think all have uh they've got channels um most of them are instagram uh instagram facebook pages stuff like that I haven't really got to know the guys yet and like really meet them and see you know what their channels are about or anything there's one guy i want to talk to about some foam tools and stuff um Oh, Dale, you missed uh, Keith Finner. I ran into Keith Finner here in uh, Massachusetts, so he was on the first part of the live stream. So they flew us up here. Um, normally, if I go out of town, just so you guys know, I'll, I'll, I'll love to promote that I'm out of town. If you guys are in the area, you want to meet up for lunch or dinner or just shake hands or whatever, fantastic. This time, it just wasn't, it wasn't in the cards. So the reason it wasn't in the cards is because uh, uh, they only uh, uh, they only flew me up here today. Um, I had dinner at 5.30. I've got to be up uh, early tomorrow, and I'm leaving at like 4 o'clock tomorrow. So it's only like pretty much a 24-hour trip, and um, I just didn't have the time. I don't have, like I said, I don't have my own vehicle. I'm in a hotel room. Um, I'm only going to be here for a day, so 
Unfortunately, you guys that are in this area, I'm not able to meet up with you, but in the future, there will be a time when I'm in the area and we set up like a meet and greet or a lunch or something like that. So <laughs> my poor wife's home alone. Sorry, baby. Um, so anyway, yeah, tomorrow I get to tour the factory and everything. And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Linux tools, you know, they I've used a lot of their uh, hole saws specifically. It's like the drill bit, you know, it looks like a circle and a little tube. I've used their drill bits or their hole saws a lot. Um, I've used their saws all blades a few times. They've got some new products are coming out with a new product. So should be pretty fun. And, and like I said, if you guys weren't on a first part of this, like Dale built something cool. Um, Justin was supposed to be at this event with me. Justin wasn't able to be at this event with me. Um, I had no clue who else was going to be here, what social influencer or anything like that. So we have dinner set up tonight. Dinner starts at 530. I walk in. And the only person I recognize is I, I see this goatee with the rubber bands. And I'm like, oh, Keith Spitter. <laughs> I was like starstruck. I don't get starstruck around like, you know, actors. And like I, my wife is, um, if you see me posting as Stephen Cox, it's my wife posting. And she's watching the, you know, the live stream and she's posting uh, as far, for my name, under my name and everything. But I don't get starstruck. I can, I bet like Dion, you know, I've ran into Dion Sanders before. I didn't go up and shake his hand or anything. I've ran into some other famous people, didn't get their autograph, didn't really, you know, and they're like, oh my gosh. And then like Keith is one of those, like, I was like, hey, man, I've been, I've been a subscriber to you since like the, 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 because <laughs> he has an awesome channel um, and, and just fantastic information and everything. But uh, a lot of you guys, I, I I want to say thank you. I know there's been a lot of concern about I haven't had a video out in about a month. Um, there hasn't been any reason to it. I've been completely healthy. Everything's going fine. Uh, the main reason is just um, you know, wrapping up the summer. Uh, I've been working out a lot. I've been doing jujitsu. I started doing Brazilian jujitsu in uh, uh, July, or sorry, I started back with it at least. Um, doing a, uh, doing that and then uh, uh, enjoying the time with the kids. And the kids started school and stuff. So it just hasn't really focus it just hasn't been you know uh, uh, a lot of opportunities for videos now i have been shooting videos and this is one of the problems i always have with youtube is i'll start a video on a particular like i'll give you a perfect example my mother-in-law's toyota avalon i started a video on it i filmed it got it to the point where i needed a part and i, I don't have the part yet so the video you know not finished and there's a couple of ways to go about that on youtube you Either film what you do during the day and just post it, or you wait till the project's finished. And I need to start getting into the habit of just posting what I have done. You know, and explaining in the video, I just don't have it done. Um, no, I don't love Justin Bieber. Thanks, Mrs. Cox. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. It just it, the, the app keeps like crashing for some reason, but. So anyway, I need to get a lot better about filming stuff and then just ending the video and saying, hey, we got to wait on parts or, or whatnot. So I don't know what the deal is, but uh, I'll get better at it. So yeah, you, know, you guys have been concerned and been worried about me for the last uh, uh, however long. Uh, what's up, JK Canvas? Says, hello from Deerfield, Maine, 45 minutes north of Springfield. I'll try to make it out to Springfield area if you can. Nice farm country up. I really like the... Uh, I love to travel. And I love going around. It's just this time I, I don't have a rental car. I didn't bring, I didn't drive myself. This is all on somebody else's expense. So I really didn't have the time to, uh, you know, to set anything up in the future. When I do set something up, uh, when I'm going out of town specifically for YouTube stuff, I am going to coordinate you guys that are on, um, I might talk about it in a YouTube video, but generally it's going to be on Instagram. If I go somewhere, I'm going to tell you that, Hey, um, uh, you know, I'm going to make a video, Instagram video. I'm like, if you guys want to meet up or something. So if you aren't following my Instagram, there's a link down in the description. I don't know if the link in this description, but if you get on Instagram, look up Stephen Cox YouTube, um, you'll find me. Um, if somebody else can link it and great, you know, I can't link it because I'm using my phone right now, but um, that's going to be the way that I kind of let, you know, inform you guys of where I'm at, where I'm going, um, some other stuff. I need to start getting a little more active in Instagram. Um, it's tough to do on a YouTube video because I don't want to make a YouTube video that's like 20 seconds and just to let people know that I'll be in you know, whatever state or whatever area. But um, you guys are always welcome to come by, you know, message me and then uh, hit me up in Texas when I'm in Texas. We can go out and meet up and do something. <laughs> Big John says it is OK. 
I don't care if you love Justin Bieber. Not a fan of Justin Bieber. That's my wife uh, giving me a hard time for being out of town so much this last week. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure what Steve uses for head gasket brands, but uh, I've never been let down by Felpro. Felpro makes good stuff. Um, generally, depend. I mean, it just depends on what it is and what I got on hand. You know, uh, most of my stuff is equipment, so uh, I don't run into a lot of Felpro products. At least they're not name brand like. Felpro makes a lot of gaskets for the companies and they slap their uh, their label on it. You know, uh, I think Cummins has theirs made by Felpro or something like that. Um, JK Canvas is cool deal. You're hanging with Linux. Uh, old school repair shops. I'm in the same boat there, Stephen, with the um, uh, college and getting stuff to move into my new house. And now with my shop getting flooded, I can't post. Can't post any videos. Yeah, it's you know, here's the deal about YouTube. To me, my creativity and my patience comes and goes in spurts. Sometimes I'll have a month where I'm making you know, two or three videos a week, and other times like I just don't feel like jacking with it. I got other stuff going on, and I just I'm not feeling creative, you know. And uh, last month was just one of those times, you know. And in the last couple of months over the summer, I've just uh, I don't know what it is. I'm not nothing's going on. There's no personal nothing, you know. It's just uh, I haven't felt like doing it. The hurricane's about to rip up the south. Yeah. Richard Womack. What's up, man? Um, yeah, there, there is a hurricane brewing. Um, it's not affecting where I'm at, but I do have a friend that just bought a house in um, whatever Carolina that's going to get hit. North Carolina? South Carolina? Whichever one's like the worst one to have a, you know, have a property in. He just bought a house there a couple of months ago, so... Oh, was somebody asking about the, the blue wrenches? So... Yeah, the, the, the people's that name is blue and it has a little blue wrench next to it. They're a moderator that can actually delete um, what people post on the comments. So I think I've got like seven or eight different moderators. Um, fortunately, I have enough moderators to where I don't need any additional moderators. And there's nothing against any of you guys that want to be a moderator. It's just when you have too many moderators, somebody will post something crazy. One of the moderators, you guys are like snipers. I mean, the the split second somebody puts something on it's deleted the problem comes up is when one of you guys are snipe it and you get too many you get too many moderators somebody sees a comment they delete it and as soon as they delete it somebody else was in the process of deleting it which undeletes the comments at that point um, so it causes a little confusion if you have too many moderators some people in their live streams they have a, a freaking ton of moderators on it you know and it's uh, it's always kind of a cluster um let's see Elijah Hillier, Hillier, Hillier says, hi, Stephen, love your videos. Thanks for your knowledge and words of wisdom. I'm a mechanic just starting out in Spoon River College Diesel and Power, si um, power Systems Technology from Illinois. Well, hello, Elijah. Welcome to the business. <laughs> John Hicks says, yeah, you need a moderator to moderate the moderators. Um, careful state of Massachusetts. They might tax you for the visit. I'm sure they will. You know, I'm, I'm kind of just have a disdain for taxes right now anyway i had the uh uh irs sent me a freaking letter the other day been in good standing with the irs no problems or anything and they sent me this nasty letter saying i owe them like 20 grand and i got 30 days to pay it you know they're gonna uh, we'll seize your accounts and stuff and i was like so i had to go hire a cpa to figure out what the IRS, you know why the irs thinks i owe me more money for two years ago which i don't but oh man Dale with Old School Repair Shop. Uh, if you guys don't subscribe to Dale, look at the comments, click on his. Dale is like a Metal Tips and Tricks. Um, uh, I think that was his channel name or is his channel name still. Um, but fantastic videos, man. I mean, just absolutely, you know, 100% on par, like video, like movie quality freaking video. Um, the videography is fantastic. And the information and the uh, knowledge is awesome. But he says is. So Dale just moved from, I think it was Georgia to San Francisco. And he said his shop is under one foot of water after um, next week. He says, my shop is under one foot of water. And after next week, when this rain is coming, me and my girlfriend are trying to get ready for it. Jeez, man. That's terrible. Foot of water in your freaking shop. And they're like, Dale doesn't have cheap stuff. You know, Dale doesn't have a shop full of a Harbor Freight stuff. It's not like it just run down to the local store and replace it. I mean, it's all like stuff that he's found really good deals on or he's rebuilt himself or he's met, you know, built himself. And insurance never is never fair on that stuff. So 
like Dale, he built this um, uh, the cabinet that had the forge, his his little his small forges on top of. Well, underneath it, he has the cabinet opens up like this, and you've got two cylinder you know, propane cylinders in there. So it's a propane fired forge on top. The cool thing about this is the propane cylinders sit on a scale. And on the side, you can have the, the entire thing is closed up. And on the side, you've got a needle that shows you if the propane cylinder is full, three quarters full, half full, quarter full, it actually does that. So he figured out, you know, the mathematics, or he figured out, you know, all the, um, um, uh, what was it, geometry, I guess. I'm about to say algebra, that's not it. He figured out all the geometry to make it to where you can look at the outside of this thing and see if your propane bottles are full, which is, you know, to me, I just pick up a propane bottle and just <laughs> shake the damn thing. But Dale made that cabinet. If you guys haven't seen it, you got to go over to his channel and check out that cabinet. And uh, it's among a whole bunch of other fantastic freaking videos that are just uh, insanely done, like uh, how well they're done, the videography and the information and Dale's character on it is, that's, um, I'm, I'm really, like, I don't understand how, like he's been on YouTube since 2012 or 13. And I don't know how he, had, he doesn't have a million subscribers yet. It just, it baffles me. Because he's got better videography and he's got a better character on screen or on the film than 98% of the other channels that I watch that do have a million subscribers. So, Oh, did I have? Oh, shoot. I'm, I'm thinking of the wrong guy. Old school repair shop. Now, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I mixed up my names. Uh, Dale has um, built something cool. Yeah, my bad, uh, Jacob. I'm sorry, man. I, I kept talking about you, kept talking about you. Um, but yeah, th that was Dale to build something. Yeah, now I feel like an idiot. <laughs> More than usual. <laughs> Air located between seat and steering, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, if you guys uh, uh, don't subscribe to Old School Repair Shop, that's another one you got to you know, subscribe to also. Uh, um, now I'm flustered. <laughs> um. So if you guys got any questions, um, uh, post them up, you know, real quick. I, I'm not going to do this live stream for an extremely long amount of time or anything. Um, I don't know if what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't know if I'll, I don't think I'm going to live stream tomorrow. I think I'm just going to film. I might live stream when I'm at the airport tomorrow. Um, let me stop saying, um, JB says, can't wait for the seven, three bill series. I need to do an oil pan on one of mine and valve cover gaskets. Another leaking everywhere, but can't kill them. They do leak after a while, and then there's something about the new fuel and oil that changed and made them leak, leak even worse. Um, the the most common leaks on those is the oil pan, the oil cooler, uh, valve cover gaskets, and then usually it's not even a valve cover gasket. Usually it's somewhere around a turbo. You got to take the turbo pedestal out and replace the O-ring on the turbo, and that thing freaking leaks all the time. Uh, Bo Bowyer wants to know, can you change your name to ST3? No. Hey, Bo, have you been training for the, uh, uh you guys that don't know Bo, uh, if you're reading him in the comments, Bo and I have been friends since I was 11, 12, 12 years old, something like that. Bo and I are actually doing a, um, uh, a Spartan race, which is a obstacle race coming up in the end of October. So Bo, you've been training for the, uh, the Spartan race. And, uh, I, I imagine you're probably in, you know, uh, just like normal, you're in good enough shape to just go out and run it at any given point anyway. There is no need for training, but I was curious the other day if you're actually uh, uh, training for it or not. I'm still I'm still on par. I got to... Uh... Oh, yeah, old school repair shop. If you do make it over there on Mill Pond, let me know, and I'll try to make it out that day so we can all meet. Uh, forgot what I was talking about. I was talking to, talking to Bo about, you know, Bo Bollier about something, but... Spartan race or whatnot, but so I do have a uh, I got a Spartan race coming up the end of October. It's October twenty eighth. It's the uh, sprint, I think. It's the first one I've ever done. So Bo Boyer says ran twice, only up to three miles. I have a really hard time believing that. <laughs> um, so I got the Spartan race coming up in October twenty eighth, and I have a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competition or Jiu Jitsu competition coming up. This month on the 20, 28th. Yeah, I think 28th of this month, 20th of next month. So 28th of this month, I've got a jiu-jitsu competition, and I have to get my weight down from where I'm at now to around 214, 215. So this last weekend, I went on vacation. If you guys were on my Instagram, you saw that. Um, even though it, it cut the video off like at the wrong part. 
too. I don't know why. Me and a couple of buddies of mine went up to Colorado or Denver and or Evergreen, Colorado, actually. I uh, spent a three or four day weekend up there. And, you know, vacation, I ate like crap. Completely ate like crap. Gained weight. I think I started the vacation 218. I came back at like 230 pounds. So <laughs> I've got like 15 pounds to lose in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I can hit weight. Uh, Smoky Ace of Spades, did you have uh, Old Blue on your channel? I'd really love to see that. Love the 90s Broncos. I don't think that's my channel, brother. I don't have a Bronco. Um, yeah, that's uh, uh, I've got the Linux deal tomorrow. Yeah, if you guys aren't aren't subscribed to Old School Repair Shop, you know, I know I was talking about Dale and I, I, I had my name confused, but go over to Old School Repair Shop, man. He's got a fantastic channel, too. Um, I subscribe to his channel. I really enjoy his channel. Uh, the other one is uh, JK Canvas. You guys saw that video I put out yesterday with JK Canvas. He's a good one. Uh, JK Canvas is, so there, there's a, a huge problem when it comes to trying to teach someone about YouTube. People will ask me and they ask Chucky and they ask Justin, you know, how do I do this on YouTube? How do I do that? And we give them our honest feedback and say, hey, you need to do this, this, and this. Most people just, they're not going to take the information. Give it to them and they think, oh, well, I, you know, I'll just do my own thing kind of deal. And it doesn't work for them. And they wonder how come, you know, they're not, they don't have as many subscribers as they thought they should at this point. Um, I know several people like that. There's several channels out there that, you know, they need, they, they're trying to grow their channel, make it big as possible. But there are a few, they just want to, they want to do their own thing. Which I'm not saying you can't be successful on YouTube and do your own thing. There's, there's a lot of people that can prove me wrong on that deal. But you know, to, to grow your channel and, and get as big as you want, you want, you take advice from other people that anything in life, like if there's something, if someone has something that you want, you don't have it. You find the people that have it and you ask them how they got it, you know? So, and you follow the freaking advice. Um, so JK canvas is one of those, uh, just like a built, uh, uh, what is it? DIY garage, Texas with Brooks. He's, he's the same. I mean, he, he did the same thing that uh, J.K. Canvas is doing. Wants to build his channel, collaborated, talked to me, talked to Justin, talked to Chucky, um, uh, has taken our advice, and, and is just fucking rocking with it. When I met Brooks, he had 200 subscribers, I think. And in a couple of months, he's up to like 9,000. And J.K. Canvas is the same way, like his first videos, you know, and everybody. When you first make your, when you first start off on YouTube and you make videos, you're going to make terrible videos. You just have to get over it. You got to make terrible videos so you know what terrible looks like. Um, and I'm not saying JK Canvas is, is terrible or anything. Um, he makes good videos. It's just the progression that when he started making videos, he was trying to figure it out on his own. And you can tell by watching his videos, he's progressed. He's taken knowledge that he's gained from other YouTubers, you know, me, Justin, and Chucky, um, and, and other videos that he watched. He's taken that knowledge and actually implemented it and, and it's growing his channel, you know, so pretty neat um yeah all, uh, old score pair shop says uh lots of laugh i made some of the crappiest videos ever if you guys go back and look at my first video it's terrible and a lot of my videos are terrible you know um uh a lot of them aren't as great as i want them to be you know i like them to be but you know you get to a point where it just doesn't really matter um i'm always critiquing i'm always trying to create a better character i'm always trying to do video you know better a little better video and stuff but um you can't uh, you can't hyper focus on it. I can tell you that much because we are our own worst enemy and we think that we weren't, um, you know, we're not interesting enough. We're not doing it enough. Uh, somebody asked, where is it? John Hicks, uh, where are you deployed? Um, if you're asking if I'm in the mil if I'm in the military, I think, I think, you know, that I wasn't in the military, but for you guys that don't know, no, I wasn't in the military. Uh, right now I'm in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I, was, I was invited here by Lennox, the company that makes saw blades, band saw blades, whole saws, metal cutoff saw uh, wheels, um, for a media event to come up. And they flew me out here today. I ate dinner with a bunch of other uh, social influencers. Uh, Keith Fenner is one of them. He was on the live stream at the beginning of this uh, with Turnaround Machine Works. Uh, so we get done with dinner tomorrow. We take off and go to the factory, tour the factory, film it. And then they've got a brand new product line they're going to release or something new. They, they're being real tight-lipped about it. They're not telling us nothing until tomorrow. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing is I'm waiting for tomorrow to pop up so I can see what Linux wants to show us. Stephen Ferreria, 
Ferreira. Ferreira says he lives in Massachusetts. And like I said, if you guys weren't on this uh, uh, live stream earlier, I would be more than happy if I had time to have made a video, put it on Instagram. Um, <laughs> Bo, this is I've ruined plenty of your blades. Um, I have no, I, I, I love, I'm in love with the idea of, of traveling when I travel, letting you guys know and meeting up with the guys that are in that area. This just isn't one of those times. I don't have my own rental car. I'm only here for 24 hours. Um, there's just not enough time to really meet anybody. So, uh, let's see. Hey, what's up, Backyard Forge? Yeah, it was a cool invitation. It was actually, um, I don't know if you know he wants to be talking about it or not. This invitation was actually sent to Chucky, and Chucky declined it. He was busy here. He didn't want to go, one of the two. Um, he sent it to me and Justin. Me and Justin and I, good at the land, had both agreed to go and was going to have a good time. And then Justin ended up not being able to go, so it ended up being me only. So I loaded my happy butt up and got on a plane this morning and stayed on a plane for three and a half hours to Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., then lay over there for an hour and then went to whatever airport I'm in. <laughs> it's in Springfield, Massachusetts. Went to that airport, got off, and then took a nap and went to eat. Says Lewis says, hey, what's going on? Uh, good to see you. I'm in that club now. Uh, I'm at the club now. I mean church. <laughs> I have to watch this later. See you later, Lewis. <clears throat> so, uh, 42 Fab, metalworking. Uh, call Richard. He likes Linux. Yeah, Richard, are you a fan of Linux products or not? I figured you would be. I mean, I think they make pretty good stuff. Uh, Smoky Ace of Spades, I'm deployed. Sorry for the confusion from us viewers. Currently in the UAE, I was saying uh, I'll start a channel after this deployment. Me working on the uh, kind of truck, probably my wife's needs work. Well, Smoky Ace of Spades, thank you for your service, sir. Um, I appreciate your service. Uh, yeah, you get to your, you know, start making videos and stuff. Let me know, you know, send me a link. I'd like to see your videos. Yeah, something... Um, I get it asked a lot. I don't know what it is. And it's not because I wear the demolition ranch hat, you know, or uh, military stuff or anything, but I get quite a bit. Usually when people meet me, when they first meet me uh, in situations, they ask me if I was in the military or what branch of the military. You know, like some people just assume like, when, so what were you in army Marines or something like that? And like, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't serve the military, didn't join or anything. Um, and I, I don't know why that is. I think it's because when I'm, uh, I'm pretty introverted. You know, like half the time, the other time I'm extroverted. So when I get in new situations, new people, I tend to just not say a whole lot, not interact in the conversations. I try to just listen to people and ask questions kind of deal. Um, it takes me a little while before I'll start talking. Then you can't get me to shut up after that point. <laughs> My wife will tell you that. Um, especially like group environments. I'm not real comfortable in group environments with more than like two or three people. You know, usually more than two, three, you know, two people, I start getting, uh, not anxiety, but I just... I just really, I kind of run out of stuff to say. And I think because I'm, I stand back, I don't say a whole lot. And, and you know, my postures, you know, I usually have pretty good posture. People assume that I was in the military. Uh, of course, my chat buffered while you were talking to me. <laughs> now, Richard, 42 Fab, I was asking you if you, um, uh, do you like Linux products? I, I, I would imagine you do because, you know, they're good products, but I couldn't tell if you're, uh, your comment was being facetious or you're just throwing it out there. So Dave Irwin of Vader Knives. Yeah, you're 10 minutes from Dulles. Like I said, in future reference, guys, when I'm going somewhere, um, I fully, you know, I, I want to let you guys know where I'm at. You guys want to come up, meet, shake hands. I'm supposedly, uh, I haven't been booked for this or not. I don't know if this is going to come to fruition. I've got a sponsor, the guys that made the, um, uh, the scan tool and one of the last videos I did, you know, the, uh, the red scan tool, uh, launch X four, three, one for you guys that remember that the comp that company wants to send me to SEMA and the apex show in Las Vegas this year, which is in the end of October, 1st, November. Um, supposedly they're going to send me there. I'm going to be at the booth for a day at SEMA, um, and the apex show. Uh, I think SEMA for one day apex for the next one. Haven't gotten confirmation on it yet. They've agreed to it, but I just don't, I don't have like the email saying, here's your flight. So if you guys are planning on being at the Apex or SEMA show this year, you might be able to see me there. 
Uh, let's see. I found Linux Master Blade cost more but weren't much better. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to try them out. Um, I've used... Um, I've used Linux products in the past, and specifically their whole saws, but I've never actually used them like in a comparison between like a Linux blade and a Milwaukee blade or a Linux whole saw and a competitor whole saw or anything like that. So I'm curious to see the difference. And Linux makes a lot more stuff than I thought. You know, they don't make just, um, there's whole saws, there's bandsaw blades, there's... Um, Reciprocating saw, like Sawzall blades, stuff like that. Um, they have an industrial line, and they've got a screwdriver, a utility knife, and there was something else. And then nobody knows what they're coming out with tomorrow. Um, I looked on the internet, trying to like do some research when they first approached me about this. I couldn't find any like anything, so I don't know what they're marketing. I don't know what they're coming out with. I don't know if it's going to be the you know latest and greatest saw blades or whole saws or what. What we'll find out tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping it's some sort of new product that, you know, you, uh, they're getting into a different, you know, feel, not different feel, but like um, uh, they're adding a new tool to the repertoire of their tools they have, or, you know, it's a, a redesign of what they currently have or something. Some manufacturers get into this deal where they, they have a product and it works pretty well. And then they want to come out with a new product just to, to move merchandise. So they'll come out with like the... Instead of the nitride coating and cobalt titanium coated drill bit, now it's a blue, you know, they'll paint them blue or something or coat them in blue and it's supposed to be the latest, greatest, whatever. I'm hoping it's not like that, but we'll see. Uh, let's see, step drill bits. Uh, I didn't know Lynx made step drill bits. Do they? I don't think they do. Um, I did find out for you guys that don't know, don't know, um, uh, Lennox is owned by the same company that owns Black & Decker, Stanley, Proto, Cra now Craftsman, Starrett, and um, a couple other ones. It's a big, huge conglomerate, all owned by the same company. So hopefully I do a good, you know, I like the product and I <laughs> make a good video tomorrow and get lots of views and they'll actually uh, uh, sponsor the channel or something or, or start sending me a lot of free stuff to give to you guys. So. Oh, Porter Cable, yeah. I'm not real, I'm not a big fan of Porter Cable Black & Decker, honestly. Um, DeWalt, you know, is a, is a decent brand, a decent brand. Um, yeah, I just like, when it comes to DeWalt, Milwaukee, or any of those like cordless tools, a lot of them to me are just, they're on par with the same. They're all about the same now. You know, they're all made in the same factory in China, probably. Uh, I can tell you, like, Starrett, you know, is like, uh, if you guys don't know what Starrett is, they make measuring tools and stuff for machinists, and they're some of the highest quality, you know, best stuff you can get. Um, definitely mo some of the most expensive stuff that you can get. Um, Keith Fenner, uh, you guys that saw him at the first of this video, you uh, you guys will, uh, he could tell you all about it. Keith is such a uh, a wealth of inform information too. Like I'm so happy that I got to meet him. I, you know, I get to get his phone number and like when I call him and like Dale with the uh, metal tips or build something cool. And, you know, he's a machinist and he can answer stuff, you know, a bunch of stuff for me. And if I, he can't answer that, I you know, I now have the ability to call Keith. And if it, it, it's one of those, if, if Keith doesn't know how to do something when it comes to machining or how to set it up, it just it probably can't be done. <laughs> A bulldog, a bulldogger six. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize I made step drill bits. I didn't, um, I didn't know that. I actually looked up a lot of their products today, and I didn't see step drill bits on there. Not saying they don't make them, but uh, it was mostly just uh, saw blades. They have a new um, called Metal Max um, saw blade, JK Canvas. I don't know if you're still watching this or not. Will um, the the blade that you brought to the shop the other day? They actually have their version of that same blade. Now I don't know if it's warranted for life, like the company that your uh, yours is or not, but I'd be curious to get my hands on some from Lennox and some uh, one of yours that you have, and we'll do a you know head to head comparison to see which one we like more. Um, just because Lennox has sent him, you know, Lennox uh, is footing the bill for this trip and everything doesn't mean I'm loyal to Lennox and like, I'm, oh, I, I got to make a positive review. You know, if it's a good product, it's a good product. If not, then, um, you know, I'll tell you guys, hey, you know, I think you're better served going somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> John Hicks. Because I think Keith Fenner's greatest skill is fitting all those tools in a small shop. Uh, yeah, Keith Rucker's good too. 
Uh, good looking honky. So Steven, Peter North here, old porn star, great stream. <laughs> Peter North, uh, I recognize that name. Um, and if you really are Peter North, man, I'm jealous um, of a certain size, but uh, I probably know way too much about Peter North <laughs> to be healthy. I, I think I was listening to Howard Stern or something one day or you know, Joe Rogan, one of those two, and they were talking about him. And uh, guy's an interesting character, you know, I mean, pretty much any adult porn stars pretty interesting character but peter seems like he's out of quite the uh <laughs> quite the odd life uh so yeah you're gonna come back and uh, find another tractor six yeah I actually i need to get over to chucky's um uh, i have chucky's kubota at the shop you guys realized that in the last video a lot of you guys did um, I'm still working on Chucky's. I've got Dale with Build Something Cool's van at my house. I need to fix it, get it fixed, done. Um, I'm going to need to go over to Chucky's. I need to um, uh, I need to go over to Chucky's. I need to get the transmission done in the Pathfinder, and I need to start on a 7.3, and there's another little Ford tractor that I need to work on. I'm pretty sure Chucky can get that Alice Chalmers back up and running. I don't, you know, he hasn't called me about it. So usually that means that he was able to figure it out. And, you know, Chucky's not a mechanic by trade, but he, he's got a lot of mechanical knowledge that he doesn't know. Um, uh, kind of makes it seem like in his videos he doesn't. Richard, 42.5, thank you for the super chat, brother. Uh, so many things uh, made in the same place, but not the same quality. I'll find my DeWalt stuff um, pretty hard, backed by great service too. I can tell you all the DeWalt stuff that I've had, I've, I've enjoyed. It always worked. Um, I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, my only deal is like, I know DeWalt was like that. All my rigid stuff, usually all my stuff is rigid, even though my freaking, my corded half inch hammer drill is missing. Thanks to the people down in San Antonio. Um, that, my one inch, my $900 one inch diaphragm pump is missing. My $1,000 half inch snap on impact is missing and my rigid half inch hammer drill is missing and my mosquito fogger is missing from all from the same shop down in san antonio um which nobody can find anyway uh i digress uh all of the the wall stuff that i've used work great i like the wall you know i'm not a big fan of milwaukee because they wouldn't warranty my crap one time but uh tom freedomed Chucky's tractor won't shift out of first gear or reverse. You have high and low in first gear, and you got reverse, and that's it. Uh, the rest of gears don't work. So I uh, pulled the shifter apart. I'm gonna have to split the tractor to figure out what there's something clanking around around the clutch and clacking. And I got to figure out why it won't shift in the gears. So that's why I'm doing a Chucky's tractor. I have his I have his Zeter, and I've got it. Uh, I'm completely done, ready to go. I actually need to go start it and drive it out. My wife pointed out this morning or yesterday that uh, there's actually uh, vines growing up around the Zeter. Uh, but Chucky's waiting to come pick the Zeter up until I get the Kubota done. And I've been very backlogged on the Kubota uh, with work and other stuff going on. I haven't, uh, haven't really had the time to jack with the Kubota. Oh, man. I'm getting tired quick. Had a pretty good dinner, had some salmon, some other stuff, then I had a couple of glasses of wine, and I think that wine's doing it for me. Um, last Friday, me and three of my friends, we all took off on Friday from Fort Worth, drove up to Evergreen, Colorado, or actually Trinidad, Colorado on Friday, um, and then drove the rest of the way to, you know, to Evergreen, spent all day Saturday and Sunday at Evergreen, drove back on Monday, um, so it was a good trip, but it was a long drive, 12 hours there, 12 hours back. And then on Monday, so Tuesday I got back, filled up with some stuff around the house, you know, spent some time with the wife. And then I took off on Wednesday morning. So I'll be traveling this week. Yeah, Bo Bowyer, are you still on the uh, the live stream? I, don't, I, don't, I guess I didn't read the comments and see if you actually answered me, if you're actually running or not. And like, I, I figured you're always, I mean, the entire time I've known the dude, he's been in great, you know, fantastic shape. The kind of guy that on a drop of a hat at any given point can just go run a marathon, kind of like Casey Neistat, and uh, just, you know, do a tremendous amount of um, uh, physical labor and not have to train for it. I mean, I got to train for this stuff. I got to train running or <laughs> it's hard. Oh, that's what's going on. 
all my comments stopped and I was like, man, what's going on? And then I had to swap down. Yeah, Smokey Ace of Spades, he said he ran twice, total of three miles. So Bo, um, Bo and I are about the same height. I think I'm 6'3", Bo I think is 6'2". Um, he might be 6'3", also. We're about the same height. Um, in high school, was a track star. I mean, he ran a 46840, if you guys that are familiar with that. You know, it's pretty quick for a um, you know, sophomore in high school. Um, really fast, was extremely good at freaking long distance uh, runs. You know, you could just set a set a freaking amount of miles and he just completed it didn't matter how many you know he's ran marathons before and stuff so uh, i haven't uh, we don't get a lot of time to hang out so i asked him a couple of months ago i was like hey you want to go do the spartan race with me at least back in july and he was like heck yeah so what do you guys think of uh, that watch my last video i've got the military engine i'm pretty confident i should make a trike out of it i want to make a drift trike like a big adult tricycle and if you guys don't know what a drift trike is you have to look them up um, it's tires on the back and you put PPC pipe over the tires on the back. And the, the, the concept is the tires just spin because of the PVC pipe. It, I mean, and you can like drift it sideways and kind of do this crazy stuff. So I thought build a drift trike because no one's ever used an engine that big for a drift trike. Most drift trikes have like a five horsepower predator motor on them. These little bitty tiny, you know, Honda knockoff motors. Um, it's going to be a 16 to 20 horsepower motor put on the back. And I thought I could put the drift trike wheels on the back and I have another set of wheels with some knobby tires and I'll go off road with it to see how, <laughs> how much mud I can go through. Um, I'm thinking that's the way I'm going to go, but I need some materials for it. I need a, I need the, the forks for the front end. Most drift trikes have a wide tire. Like if you guys ever seen the bicycles with the wide tires, the four inch wide tires. I need the fork set up for the front and I need the axle set up for the back. Uh, the frame and everything I can do myself. Me and Chucky can figure out. I mean, um, I think Brooks with the Do It Yourself Garage Texas uh, wants to get in on it. I think JK Canvas wants to get on it too. Uh, Brooks is a master fabricator by uh, a hobby slash trade. So, you know, if he wants to get in on it, you know, it's, I'm, I'm going to take full advantage of uh, his expertise on it. But I need the axle for the back. I need the sprocket, the bearings. I need some sort of clutch set up, and I need the front fork set up. Um, I, yeah, Jackson, I know they make drift bike forks, um, but they're a lot more expensive. I'm trying to make this thing. I want to make it as cheap as possible. If I don't have to buy anything great, if I can salvage stuff off of it, I would I would love for the drift truck to come out and look like a rat rod, you know, just a hodgepodge of crap. Um, and make it reliable to where, you know, it's not a death machine or anything, but... You know, like the front fork kit, if I buy, if I get online and I buy that kit, buy the actual kit and the front fork kit, I'm just going to spend 500 bucks on the, just those. And then I still got to buy the um, tube steel and the seat and the throttle control and the clutch and all that. So I'll have a grand into the freaking drift trike build. Um, yeah, junk dirt bike forks in the front. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on this drift truck. I want to make it as cheap as possible. And if I if I start buying parts and components, it makes it extremely hard to be economical on this stuff. Um, yeah, donor motorcycle for, uh, on the cheap would be good. And that way I could get the brakes off of it and the um, uh, the front front wheel and everything. Uh, MLH repairs LLC. So uh, I'm up here for Linux uh, Linux brand tools. Linux makes um, bandsaw blades, hole saws, um, sawzall blades, uh, some step drill bits, apparently. And they're having a media day tomorrow. They flew me and a bunch of other YouTubers and social media influencers up here um, today. We ate dinner. Tomorrow we're going to their factory. We're going to tour the factory. We're going to have lunch. And after that, they're going to have a demo of a brand new product they're coming out with. They're launching a brand new product you guys have never seen. They, there's no information on the internet about it, at least I don't uh, that I couldn't find. Um, so uh, they flew me up here today, uh, eat dinner, eat breakfast in the morning, go to the tour, lunch, and get to try out these new products. So I'm up here for Linux right now. So you'll see, I don't know. I would tell you, you know, if I knew what it was, you know, I would tell you guys like, hey, you know, this is, you know, it's gonna be a new saw blade or something like that, or they're getting into power tools or something. I can tell you what I think it is. I think they're branching i think they're gonna i really think they're getting into something different they're not just reinventing the wheel with the 
like, uh, you know, the right now, one of their cutoff wheels is called the Metal Max. They're not going to come out with like the Metal Max 2 and fly all of us up here and spend all this money on it. I really have a feeling that it's going to be some sort of power tool, um, you know, like their own band saws or their own sort of power tool or something that's different from what they have done, because I don't think they've ever pushed the product like this. Um, so it makes me think it's going to be something new, something they've never come out with before. And it's not just going to be like the newest, you know, flat blade screwdriver kind of deal. Oh, thank you for the uh, the super chat, Jackson. I appreciate it, man. You guys don't know what super chat is. Um, uh, if you look on the comments and the below, there's a little feature. There's a little dollar sign there. You hit that dollar sign. You can super chat a little as a dollar. You know, I, I think the maximum is like 500 or something like that. I have had somebody do 500 before, believe it or not. It was Tater Salad, and I haven't heard from Tater Salad since. So I guess he overspent himself. Um, but you can, you know, the money goes to the channel. You can donate, you know, a couple bucks to the channel, and it um, it highlights your comment to where I will actually see your comment and make sure that I answer it and read it. Um, if you guys are going to do it, I wouldn't, I'd probably wait till the next live stream or something because I'm about to end this live stream. I'm getting dry mouth. I'm tired. Um, I still need to go freaking lift weights. Uh, yeah, Jackson, uh, I don't know what happened to Tater Salad, man. He he donated a whole bunch of money to my channel for the Lipstick Challenge. I think he donated like 700 bucks for the Lipstick Channel. And then he went over to Justin's channel and he donated uh, like three or $400 to Justin's channel or something. And I, I have a feeling that he just, he, he went way too new nuts on a credit card or something. And which I don't want you guys to do. I mean, if you guys feel it, you know, like if you feel something in the back of your head, like, hey, I should donate some money, you know, get some money to my channel or Justin's channel or somebody's channel, you know, Patreon or whatever, then do it. But if it's going to financially, you know, uh, burden you in any way, shape or form, then I don't want that money from you. You know, if it if it's, you know, give me a dollar or uh, uh, not eat or give me a dollar and not have that dollar for gas in your tank, then I don't I don't need that. You know, and it's not what that's for. That's just, it's for a it's just for, you know. Hey, I've got an extra buck and it's not gonna make any difference to me or nothing. You know, maybe it'll help out the channel. Maybe it won't or whatever. Here you go. Kind of deal. So all the Patreon, um, you know, Patreon donations and stuff like that. It's like you guys that mail me stuff, you know, they want to send me stuff. Um, the same deal, you know, you mail it because you like, Hey, I think this guy could use it kind of deal, you know, and, and that's it. Don't mail it because like, Oh man, I really shouldn't mail this. And, and, and I'll, I'll tell you this specifically don't mail stolen stuff. Okay. You would, you would, think um uh you would think that this would kind of goes without saying but some people have sent me some stuff that i'm pretty sure was stolen from the company they work for like they just took it and just sent it to me like hey this didn't cost me anything and i don't want that stuff um don't steal stuff from your company and send it to me it's not going to make it on the video because uh, the things i'm questionable about like uh, hey can you know when a guy sent me something and then I did, uh, uh, in the message when I got it said, Hey, when you get this, can you make sure you, you don't show the serial number? And I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Aaron power. Hi from Ireland. Uh, I have never worked on a David Brown tractor. It actually sounds pretty cool. John Hicks. Thank you for the two bucks, man. Says I'll release this for answering my questions. No problem, sir. Um, I do enjoy answering questions. I like to hear my own voice. I am, um, uh, I am, <laughs> I am vain enough to admit that, or uh, I don't know what that, that makes me, but uh, yeah, I am vain. I do like to hear my own voice. So uh, I do like to answer questions as much as possible. Uh, Thron Fett one two three donated ten bucks. Thank you, sir. It says let's get the, uh, the stream to fifty. I don't know if that's gonna happen. We're at seventeen now, so uh, probably got about five more minutes. Yeah, John Hicks, that happened for real. A guy actually sent me something, and in the um, the, the package that it came up in an envelope had it's like, hey, you know, this is uh, uh, some bullshit story about, hey, um, uh, just love your channel. Thanks for doing everything. If you would, please don't show the serial number to this in the video. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's not the donations that I, I want, guys. Uh, don't steal from your companies. I... I Having had employees, I wouldn't want my employees taking my shit and sending it to a YouTuber. I don't care how cool the YouTuber was. Any opinions on converting school bus engines to run on waste vegetable oil too? 
Uh, Richard, 42 Fab, asked, any opinions on converting school bus engines to run on vegetable waste fish pool? I am fully, like, I, I think it's a cool idea, and I've always wanted to make a, a they call them WVOs, or waste vegetable oil setups. The only thing that I know about these is one, or a couple of things. One, you have to replace your rubber hoses. Your rubber hoses will not survive through vegetable oil. Um, it dries them out or does something, makes them crack or whatever. So you got to replace all the rubber hoses. Um, the other deal, you have to heat the tank of vegetable oil before you can swap it over to running on straight vegetable oil. So I think vegetable oil has to be 170 or 180 degrees. So if you're going to do a setup, you would have to have two tanks, one vegetable oil, one regular diesel tank. Start your engine on uh, diesel, let it get hot, run your heater hoses or your, you know, like a, basically you run your heater line back to a heater core that's inside your tank for your waste vegetable oil that heats the mixture up to 170, 180 degrees. And then you have a diverter valve where you can actually switch it from your diesel to your waste vegetable oil. Um, waste vegetable oil has to be hot before it'll combust and it needs to be warm for it to flow correct, you know, actually get through everything. Um, I do know it causes havoc with injection pumps and rubber, you know, rubber seals and whatnot. I think inside the injection pump, it has to have like um, silicone O-ring or silicone seal, the Vuitton seals that can't have the, uh, whatever the other one is. Uh, but I, like I said, I, a lot of you guys probably know more about it than I do. But it's been years and years and years since I researched it, but I really like the idea. It's pretty cool. The other problem though is getting waste vegetable oil. There is a, um, uh, at a, a time, from my understanding, there was a time where you can go to a restaurant, they'd sell you what they, you know, they would give you what they had, and a lot of times would pay you to take it. You know, uh, five bucks would give you a free meal to take the stuff, stupid stuff. But now it's gotten to the point where there's a market for it. So people go around and they actually um, uh, pay a little uh, fast food places for it. So, uh, BH Ringer, the boss visit. The, uh, the boss garage visit is still a go. Um, I'm shifting the timeline. I'm trying to get a sponsor to pay for the trip. The trip is very is going to be very expensive. It's going to cost me about fifteen hundred bucks to fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars to get up there and back for about a week. The flight up there and back is like eight hundred fifty dollars for a round trip ticket. Um, about eight hundred nine hundred dollars, and then there's a rental car on top of that, which is a couple hundred bucks, and the hotel on top of that, a couple hundred bucks, and then. Mills on top of that is going to be a couple hundred dollars. So I'm in the discussion with a sponsor to fund that trip to go up there, just like the SEMA and APEC show. Um, if I can get them to pay for it, then I'll go up there. But I'm trying to head it up. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a sponsor that wants to sponsor my channel, um, wants to send me a product, wants to pay for the video. And then they want me to basically go and bring the same product to the boss garage, fly mm -hmm. me up there. Um, fly me up there and then I, you know, basically I introduce that product to, you know, Rich if it's a good product that Rich wants to do too and I think I have that set up, I just need the I need to go ahead and I need them to put their money where their mouth is from a particular sponsor uh, Backyard Forge, yeah, you can mix, use motor oil and diesel for the old stuff, you, you know, right around 2005, five, six, it doesn't work anymore, it messes the pumps up uh, older in the mechanical injection pumps, you know, you you can play with that mix and you'd be fine. Uh, I've heard a couple of people mixing ATF into their diesel and their 7.3s run on it. Uh, VH Ringer. No, it's not Nordlock. I don't know what the deal with Nordlock is right now. Um, yeah, Nordlock did a couple of videos with me, and uh, it was a paid sponsorship, you know, like I said in the videos. Um, although, no, no, I didn't say it in the videos. It, it was a paid sponsorship, you know, leave it at that. The way they had it set up is they didn't want me to specifically say Nordlock paid for the videos, because Nordlock specifically didn't pay for the videos. The actual invoice went to somebody else that paid, you know, for the videos um, via whatever. Anyway... Uh, they have not renewed any videos with me. The sales rep that I'm talking to, Bruce, is supposedly supposed to do some videos with me. I talked to him in September. I talked to him in January or in June. I talked to him in July. And for whatever reason, he still hasn't scheduled a video. Now, in the meantime, they did send some free samples to DeBoss Garage to get the stuff on DeBoss Garage's channel, you know, Rich's channel. I wrote and uh, spoke to Rich about it, and I don't know. I don't. I don't think it was a paid deal. I don't think they paid the Boss Garage for the video um, or anything. They just sent him some samples out, but 
I don't know. You know, I don't know if they're going to make another video with me or not. Um, and it's not up to me. It's up to them. I would love to. I really like working with them. They were e very easy to work with and an extremely high quality, good product. So I would really enjoy doing another sponsorship with them. But it's just, it's kind of a weird deal. And something I don't understand, they do. If you get on their YouTube channel, they spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on uh, production fees for these videos that are on their channel. Um, they've got like, a, I think a couple thousand subscribers and their average video gets like 200 views. You know, the average, their average video that's been up for a month gets 200 views. And they probably spend 10 to 15 grand on one freaking video, you know, being filmed. And it's just crazy. And I told them, I'm like, Hey, you know, if you'll foot the bill, you fly me and Justin over there and then pay us X amount a day, you know, we'll make those videos for you, put them on our channels and we'll get you 100,000 views on that. And they just not going to happen. Oh, my son's on. Caleb. Hey, buddy. Caleb's on a computer. So if you're seeing my name pop up right now, it says Stephen Cox with the crown on it. That's my son, Caleb. So you guys say hi to Caleb and be nice to him. He was uh, sick last week, a little stomach bug. Um, his brother, older brother, Ethan, got sick yesterday. And uh, Caleb had to miss, miss school on Friday and then miss school on Monday. And Ethan missed school on Monday. And Ethan missed school today. So there's something going around. And. Poor little dude's been sick, and I've been traveling a lot, so I haven't been able to spend any time or help out my wife with uh, taking care of the kiddos. Yeah, I don't know what to do with this with the stream. It's uh, it's doing weird stuff. My, I got plenty of uh, signal here, but it's just it's. You know, I keep saying you know the app is closed, forced app to close, and I gotta reopen it back up. Uh, Vasily Custom Builds says Blake Johnson actually build Predator engines on his ch on his channel. That's cool. Yeah, I'll score a pair shop. It wasn't the flu with them. It was some kind of stomach bug. Um, both of the boys felt absolutely fine and just started feeling sick. And within about 20 minutes of feeling sick, threw up. After that, felt fantastic. Running around, playing, no problem. And then a couple hours later, start feeling sick, throw up. And I did that five or six times for a day. And then now they're just better. So some kind of stomach bug that went around. I haven't gotten it, you know, luckily. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. Yeah, Craig Pelletier. Pelletier. -tier. I'm still here for now. Um, I keep answering questions, so if I had something to drink, you know, I'd be doing a lot better, but I'm getting kind of tired and getting thirsty. Although at least my lighting's good. I've actually got a good light here in the uh, the hotel room, so... That helps out. Uh, Ordinary Joe, I didn't find a trike. I found a motor um, that I did some horse trading for to build a trike. Now I need to start collecting the pieces to build the trike. Dirty Rivers says, beer clock. Man, I'm on my diet. I can't drink beer until Saturday. I got to lose some weight. Uh, milling monster, it's a hundred. That, that engine, the military motor, is 110 pounds. Normally, on a drift trike, um, all the ones I've seen have been like a five horsepower engine, six horsepower motor. Nobody's nobody's built one with an engine that big. Now, hey, Steve, should I do streams? I got that set up now on Backyard Forge, Jackson. Um, any content is better than no content, brother. Yeah, do your streams. Um, and if you don't get a lot of views or a lot of subscribers at first watching it, you know, don't get discouraged. Just keep keep uploading them. Um, the streams are kind of tough because the streams, you get a lot of engagement. Um, you get a lot of uh, comments, but you don't get a lot of views from them. So if I leave the stream up for a month, this stream might have like 3,000 views. Uh, Caleb, I don't, I'm sorry, buddy. I, don't, I can't wait back. Um, I can't post a comment on here when I'm on the live stream bubble. So don't get mad at me or anything. It's just, a, I, don't, I can't do it from while I'm filming on my phone. I can't do that. Dirty Reaver says you got 1100 Honda shadow engine on a go-kart. That'd be a fun deal. Yeah. I just think that the, um, uh, I think the drift track could be a cool deal. And then uh, later, you know, I could pull the engine out, put it on something else, but Hasn't been done with the military engine, at least. And if I make it a rat rod, it'd be a pretty cool project. 
Whew. Yeah, <laughs> John Hicks is, but I can wave real loud. Say hi, Caleb. Uh, vastly custom builds. I think it would be slick if Chucky uh, welded up the frame for the drip truck. Just a bicycle fork welded to two frame rails, but I can message you if you would like to go that route. Um, I think what I'm going to have happen on the welding is if Chucky wants in on it, then not, you know, obviously Chucky can get in on it and everything. I don't know if Chucky would be interested in doing it or not. He might be, he might not. I was planning on getting Brooks with the uh, do-it-yourself garage, Texas, um, to do the welding on it. You know, he's he's in grow mode. He's really trying to grow his channel and he wants to collaborate with stuff, him and uh, JK Canvas. Uh, so I was, I was planning on utilizing both of those guys for the build and doing that way. And then if Chucky, you know, like I said, if Chucky's invited, like whatever I'm into, if he wants to get into it too, he can get into it. Oh. Yeah, build a dirt mower. Well, guys, I'm getting tired. I need. I still need to go work out and st or stretch and, or go work out and then come back and stretch, take a shower. So I'm going to call it a night. I appreciate you guys um, getting on the live stream. Uh, you guys that didn't watch the first of the live stream, once this live stream is over, if you give it like 10, 20 minutes, you come back to the live stream, watch the first part. Keith Finner is on the video with me. If you don't know who Keith Finner is, he is a YouTuber, been on YouTube since like 2011, 12. Uh, he's got a thousand videos or something like that, 500 videos. Um, got a hundred something thousand subscribers and just absolutely fantastic video uh, information, you know, and I, I don't, like I said, in the first part of this video, I don't get starstruck. I can be in the same room with some kind of big, you know, TV star, music star, and I don't get like anything when I walked in and I saw Keith Benner here. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> I know you. Um, uh, so dad, Hey dad, what's up, Caleb? Yeah, Jeff Skews. Yeah, really, Keith Fenner. Yeah, he's up here with me. You'll see him on the video. I'll make. I'll take the video tomorrow and I'll upload it when I get back home. But you guys will see it. He's also going to put a video up on his channel, and I'm probably going to put some stuff on Instagram. So if you guys want to keep track of what I'm doing tomorrow or for the future, hit up my Instagram. It's just Stephen Cox YouTube. Um, get on there, start following me. Uh, if you don't have the app, it's a free app. You can download it. I'm going to start doing short little videos on Instagram. And just because there's a lot of th little things that I want to film and I want to put up and show you guys and contact with you guys, but I don't necessarily want to put like a 30 second video on YouTube. Um, oh yeah, Caleb, I saw that. Mommy sent me that picture. I, I did get my YouTube play button. So that was pretty cool. Oh, Richard, 42 fab. He put a link up to my Instagram. So if you guys want to follow my Instagram, um, the link that Rich, uh, Richard 42 Fab put on, just put up, click on that. Uh, yeah, I did get my uh, silver play button. You guys don't know what that is. YouTube, after you get 100,000 subscribers, will send you a um, trophy, basically, and, you know, kind of a wall picture frame deal. I did have to write YouTube, and I did have to remind them that, hey, I'm at 100,000. I need mine. Um, so, yeah. Either way. What's crazy is, you know, Chucky doesn't have one. They never sent Chucky a, <laughs> a silver play button. And Chucky's got 480,000 subscribers. And Justin, good to land, has 130,000 subscribers. And he doesn't have one. So you have to write them once you hit 100,000 subscribers. But, guys, I appreciate it. I'm going to get off the phone and call my sons before they go to bed. Um, thank you for all the super chats, all you guys that um, uh, put that up. Thank you for you guys that are helping out with the links and stuff, like Richard42Fab. Thank you for helping out and all that stuff. Uh, keep uh, keep track of tomorrow and get out and fix something. 